After you've worked with planes a little bit, just doing basic flat ones, I think it's important to start to create some variations. One of my favorites is planes that seem to arc and to curve. This is going to set you up for doing things like cylinders and stuff like that um, in a really quick and easy, fun way. What I like to do is, especially when I'm practicing, trying to get better, trying new things, I like to use two different materials. In this case, I'm using a fairly light color pencil, uh, in this case a light green, and then a darker red color pencil. And that way, it's going to allow me to sort of search with one and finish with the other. The other thing that I'm doing with these arc planes is where if I were to light this, it would create a division between light and dark at a certain point. And so I like to put a soft tone across that edge just to indicate that this is kind of turning. And what you want to do is try to make the page look good whenever you do this sort of thing. So think about where you're placing everything on the page. Think about drawing larger. Whenever you draw larger, a mistake of a sixteenth of an inch doesn't matter at all. But when you draw really small, every sixteenth of an inch matters. You know, if you're off one centimeter on the size of a piece of paper, yeah, you might notice it, but it's not as big of a deal as if you're drawing, you know, very, very tiny, like a mechanical pencil size thing. The other thing to do is access the side of your pencil and, um, and don't just use the, the tip. That's something that is a quick fix in order to get you some options about where to put uh, exact lines. And your lines in this exercise do not have to be straight when you do any kind of, of connecting vertical or horizontal line between your arcs. The other thing you can do is play around with which side overlaps. And um, so you know, notice on this sort of C-shaped arc that the back uh, goes behind the other one. I'm not even really drawing through the form. That's a really cheap way to buy a bunch of depth. Um, and you'll find that that's really effective and something that you can do with all kinds of planes and forms and all these basic exercises. Another thing that you will want to do is play around with different angles and the amount of space you can get. So here I'm doing another overlapping sort of arc, but I've changed it so it feels like this is kind of sitting on a ground plane. And then to emphasize all of this, I've made the arc widen out as it comes forward. So it feels like the back is going further back and getting smaller in space. So this could be like, you know, a curved foot bridge or a suspension bridge or something like that. Um, when I do this sort of stuff, I think it's really important to think about what the potential applications are or what this reminds me of. So the top pieces, they kind of feel like, you know, parts of armor or maybe like a bit of a skateboarding half pipe could be like a part of a, a tube, could be a bridge. Um, this one kind of reminds me of, of some kind of tunnel or something like that. And I think it's important to make those associations as you go along so that you know where this is going, right? If you don't understand where something's going, it's really hard to stay focused. And I think if you know where this is headed, if you know why you're doing this, it's easier to um, stick with it and try these exercises and get really good at them. Because I think these are really important to get good at. Um, you know, it's only now after I've been drawing for like, you know, 19 years that I'm really enjoying these and getting good at these. You know, I, I probably ought to have practiced them more in the beginning, and I wish that I did. And I'm not saying that it, that it takes 19 years to get good at them. You can get good at them in a few days. Um, I just think that, you know, it's something that I wasn't paying attention to and I didn't see the value in back then, but I do now. Um, the other thing that you will want to do is play with line weight. And line weight is basically darkness and thickness of lines. And the general rule of thumb with line weight is that thicker and darker lines come forward. 
thinner and lighter lines go backward. And this is in a sense of where you're not really working with um, value much or rendering very much. You can change that relationship, of course. So what you want to do is, especially as you go through curved lines, vary the line weight as the line continues. Whenever there's a line on the ground, you can make it darker and heavier to, to make it feel like there's a ground shadow. And again, every time the, the plane sort of changes direction in a major way, you can put a little bit of, of a tone down to help that plane turn in space a little bit more. So these are just a couple of variations on, on arced planes, and you can come up with a lot more. So use your creativity and think about what you might want to do with all of these plane types and keep trying these exercises.